Jesse. Um, today I'm going to try and help you understand the topic of addiction a little bit better. Uh, when I was sitting in your seats, every time somebody brought this message, they tried to scare me with things like, hey, this is your brain, this is your brain on drugs. And I never walked away feeling like I got anything out of it. I didn't feel scared. I didn't feel informed. So my goal today is that you feel more informed. And most of all, so it's, most of you are going to walk away today uh, kind of going, okay, whatever, that message was fine. But I, I think I'm going to plant some seeds that at some point in your life uh, might make a difference. At least I hope so. Um, so understanding addiction really starts with this addiction graph, okay? Um, this graph shows four, or, I'm sorry, six different points on it, and you'll see that addiction line right in the middle. So a lot of you are sitting here and you are not addicts. In fact, most people that try to use substances or do certain negative behaviors do not become addicts, okay? However, every single one of you sitting here someday will be affected in some way, shape, or form by addiction. Whether it's you yourself, it's a family member, a good friend, uh, somebody who is working for you, or somebody you are working for. The fact is, even though most people who use substances don't become addicts, every one of us now is being affected greatly by this concept this concept of addiction. So understanding it, I think, is really important. And I'm gonna try and do it with a little bit of time that I have. So if you look at number one on this graph, that's the person who doesn't use, maybe never used, or maybe they did that one time, and it wasn't even like that much. It, it was just kind of an experiment. Maybe they got scared. Or it might be the adult who every once in a while has a drink, but doesn't get wasted, doesn't even get buzzed. Okay. Number two is that person who, you know what, it's kind of like recreational. They use, there's no problems. The key to knowing addiction is understanding when your consequences are something that you can no longer prevent. Okay. Just because you have great consequences and you promise yourself, you still keep suffering those consequences over and over again. But number two, that person, that's the person who maybe does that negative behavior or uses that substance every once in a while, but those consequences aren't really there. If they are, they're like super minor. Okay. Um, number three is when it gets to be kind of like a problem. Okay. That's, that's that person who... They, they go a little too hard or like a lot too hard and there are definitely consequences, whether it be school or relationships or that time that they did that thing that broke something or affected their, their sports team. Okay, that's the person who's starting to get a little bit scary, but they're still not an addict. They haven't crossed that line of addiction. Okay, but they've got to start to think. They've got to start to ask themselves, what is going on with my life? What do I want? Is this okay? And so that number three is somebody that's got to be cautious. Now, here's the key. Number three can go back to number two, and number two can go to one. And one might go to three for a while, and then all the way back to one, and seasons of life may dictate where you go between one, two, and three. Okay? And it's interesting because we think of substance abuse, drugs and alcohol, but this graph is also for other addictions, whether it be technology addictions, relationship addictions, sex addictions, okay? So try and think beyond just substance abuse. Now, number four is when you have crossed that line. And I want you all to hear this C. The moment you cross the line into addiction, you cannot go back. Your brain has physically changed forever. Now, it's not that you can't live a good life. It's not that you can't be productive and happy and live a life that looks normal. It's that you just have permanently changed something in your brain that cannot go back. So a number four can never become a three, even, four, even though three and four look like each other. Okay? They look exactly alike. Now, by the time you get to number five, you stop um, really kind of having any control whatsoever. You stop kidding yourself that you have control. 
you might still be in a place that you do things like interrupting people down here in front and you might still um, have those you know those thoughts like I'm pretty sure I can do good and you do every once in a while you even sometimes stop the behavior but you know what you always go back in a heavy heavy way okay you always go back in a heavy way you trick yourself all the time this is the person that bounces back between okay I don't have a problem I definitely have a problem but everybody around them knows they have a problem okay and then once you get to six that's like Number six is the person that everybody thinks of as an addict. Okay, I can't tell you how often I have a teen or an adult come into my office and they say, I'm not an addict because I don't look like that guy out on the street. I don't use every single day. I can totally control it. The number six is like totally obvious. They're the ones on the street. They're the ones who can't get by a single moment without drinking the alcohol or doing that. Their entire life is blown up. Now the problem with getting, if you allow yourself to get to a six, you have lost a lot. Now the number six is the one that they come in telling you about, right? That's the one everybody scares you with. And um, the four and five is who I deal with the most. They're the ones who don't even realize that they are losing so much, right? They make excuses for it all. They, they, they lost relationships, but hey, it's everybody else's problem, not their problem. It's, it's not their fault. And, and they don't realize that there's one constant in their life, and that's the addiction behavior, okay? So hopefully this graph helps you understand um, the, the progression of addiction, because not all addicts do look the same, even though there are behaviors and thoughts and attitudes that are the same throughout all addicts, okay? And it's important to remember, when you are a one, two, or three, you're not an addict. You can bounce between those. Once you make it to four, the if you continue that behavior or that use, you will progress. Some people progress really quickly and some people progress really slowly, okay? Um, a few truths about addiction, and, and some of these you may have heard, but uh, a, a lot of people tell me that they, they really haven't heard it put in this way. And, and people are shocked. Parents, teachers don't really like it when I say most people do not become addicted to drugs and alcohol. Um, how, however, there are a lot of other addictions that affect behaviors that affect the dopamine in your brain. Okay, that's where we got the whole word dope, right? Dopamine is the neurochemical responsible for feeling pleasure. And when you stretch that dopamine out, Okay, when you flood it in a way that, you know, instant gratification, and that's what all addicts are seeking, is instant gratification instead of waiting to feel content and good. They want to feel fun and happy right now. Okay, so most people don't become addicted to drugs and alcohol, but there's a lot of other addictions that people fall into. However, it's important to understand every one of you sitting here at some point in your life will be affected by addiction in one way, shape, or form. Not that you'll be the addict, but somebody around you will struggle. Some people are far more likely to become addicted. It's totally unfair. There are some of you sitting here have behaviors, tendencies, family histories that make it more likely that you will become an addict. And I'm sorry, I, I feel bad for you. Okay, I know people have tried hard to become addicts and they just don't. They go back and I've known people who they try something one time and boom, they're addicted. They're done. They can't stop. And it's unfair, but some of you really need to take a look at your family history. And you need to become honest about how you behave towards things. You need to become honest about what your tendency is. All addicts tend to um, have a hard time taking blame for things. All addicts really love pointing the finger. All addicts want what they want right now, like instantly. Not, I'm not even going to wait now. I want it now. I want it now. Okay. A lot of people think that it's the traumas that lead to addiction, and that, that is true. I'm not saying that people don't use to get away from certain feelings, but the fact is there are some behaviors that are exhibited before you become an addict, and if you can be totally honest with yourself, you can figure out if you're one of those people that's more likely to become an addict or not. It can happen 
to anyone at any time. Please hear that message today. It can happen to anyone at any time. Money doesn't matter. Good looks don't matter. Athletic ability does not matter. Being from a home that is totally perfect and white picket fence, that doesn't matter. Anyone at any time. We have not been able to say, hey, this is the type of person that becomes like doctors, lawyers, priests. Anyone at any time can be an, become an addict, especially if they are not willing to take a look at themselves and be careful and admit when something is approaching number three on the graph. Um, this one is really important, and for those of you who, um, a lot of teens come in, love weed, they insist that they're not addicted, I'm not gonna get into that debate today. However, um, periods of sobriety are not, or not using, is not proof that you are not an addict. I hear that every week in my office, right? Dude comes in, He's in trouble for smoking weed. Everybody around him thinks he's got a problem with weed. And he goes, Brandon, I am not an addict. And here's why. I stopped for two days. It was amazing. I feel good. I reset myself. And I'm good. I'm not an addict, I swear. And, and that's the person that, that can't understand. It doesn't matter. Sobriety. Every single addict I have ever worked with has periods of sobriety. Sobriety is not the key. Recovery. Changing yourself. Making difficult changes in your life. That's recovery. Sobriety doesn't matter for an addict. And it is not proof that you're not an addict. Again, I'm going to repeat myself. Every single addict I've ever worked with has been able to go periods of time without using. Okay. Um, every addict has periods and seasons in their life where they are really stuck in justification and denial. The problem with justification and denial period is that you literally can't see it. Everybody around you can see it, but you can't see it. You believe the justifications. I mean, you believe them like nothing else. Every single addict gets stuck at some point in periods of denial and justification. Addiction behaviors always increase. I said that earlier. The moment you get to a four, if you're not getting help, your behavior when it comes to addiction will grow. And here's another thing. Addictions switch, they swap. I've known people who um, use one drug, they get totally sober and clean off of that drug, and then they come to find out they were using something else, thinking, hey, I'm not addicted to this substance, it's only this substance. Now you gotta remember, all addictions affect that dopamine, that pleasure center of the brain. The brain's not going, oh yeah, this is weed. Oh, that's alcohol, okay, I have a problem with weed, not alcohol. It's just the flooding and the blocking of that pleasure center. Your brain can't tell the difference. It's very common for addictions to swap. Okay, don't you please don't use one negative behavior or drug to get off of another negative behavior or drug. Okay, it, it, people have been trying to do that since the dawn of time. It doesn't work. That's not how addiction works. Um, you must ask for help in order to get control. Once you become a four, you will not be able to do it alone. And I have had this debate, I've had, I don't have these debates anymore, but I've had so many people, including professionals, just try to discuss with me ways that people can do it on their own. I've been doing addiction work for over 20 years, I'm telling you. Once you recognize you are an addict, don't try to do it on your own. You ask somebody safe for help. And oddly enough, that kind of relinquishing, that I give up, I surrender, that attitude goes really far into you getting back to a life that you're proud of and a life that feels good when you cross into that line of addiction. Um, something I didn't write on here, but it's worth mentioning, is it is really hard to almost impossible to talk somebody who's in denial into recognizing that they're an addict. And then like sometimes when they recognize it, the next moment they go, oh, no, no, never mind, okay? And so that's what's really hard in helping addicts is um, that denial piece is just 
one of the strongest forces on the face of the planet. There's a lot of different addictions, right? Um, drugs and alcohol, gambling, technology, food, relationships, sex, and again, I already said, all of them affect the same pleasure center of the brain. Uh, there's, I was having a discussion with somebody who heard me speak yesterday, and I thought I should try to briefly go through this. All of these can become addictions. Drugs and alcohol, I put at the top, because the way that they affect the dopamine in number is greater. So let's say that they affect that dopamine at a 200. Uh, food might be like at a 100, even though all of them can become addictions. Okay. Now, I'd like to mention food because I think that food is the least talked about, yet most prevalent addiction right now out there. And it's something that's really shameful for people to ask for help with. And it gets really confusing because it's one of those things you can't stop eating, right? You can't just say, hey, I'm never going to eat again and I have a food addiction. You can say, I'm never going to smoke weed again. I'm not going to drink again. That you're still going to live a great life. But um, food is one of those addictions that we're still trying to figure out how to help people in a non-shameful and really good way. Okay. Um, Genetics versus choices. Understand that what I said earlier is totally true. Some of you are more likely to become addicts than others. And I want everyone to kind of take a look at their own behavior, their own history, their family history, and check that out. However, um, your choices, the decisions you make, okay, the things you put in your body, how you put them in your body, how often you put them in your body, that plays a huge role on becoming an addict. The fact is, the more you do something unhealthy, the more you are likely to become an addict. It's just that for some people, it's instant, and for some people, it takes a really long time. Okay. Um, knowing your own tendencies and family history is important. I've said that now three or four times. That's how important I think that is for everybody to take a look at. Even if you are not predisposed, you can behave in a way that, and lead your life in a way that leads to addiction, okay? Your brains are not permanent, okay? We change them all the time. Um, this slide, if you can read it, is, uh, yesterday I didn't read it, I'm gonna read it today because I think it's so important, okay? Unwillingness to be uncomfortable is a characteristic that all addicts have in common. It's heartbreaking the misery an addict inadvertently chooses because they don't want to feel uncomfortable or experience difficult feelings in the moment. That's speaking to that whole instant gratification thing. We all love instant gratification. Some of us make the choice to be really uncomfortable in the moment, to grow, even if we don't know for sure it's going to pay off. And that, an addict can't do that. Once you become an addict, you cannot do that. It, it's wild because it doesn't just show in the use of the drugs, it shows, it ends up showing up in every aspect of their life. It changes their personality. The addict will avoid everything from the uncomfortable feeling of being bored in class to sadness about a tragedy or trauma. Okay. Avoidance leads to becoming an addict. And what's wild is, as you read, um, even once you become an addict, even if you intellectually know what you're doing and you want to choose the other thing, it, it feels almost impossible. It feels like, okay, I know what I want to do, and oh my gosh, my body, my mind keeps doing the wrong thing. Right? And it's wild because the addict avoids being uncomfortable, knowing they're going to be miserable, knowing that they're gonna be miserable. And, and even those functioning addicts, those addicts that seem like they have it all together, they are miserable, trust me. Okay. You cannot persuade, bribe, or scare a true addict into recovery. They have to choose it. I can't tell, me, tell you how many times I have reflected to an addict what's going on and they know. And we don't always know what, um, you know, what, what 
is getting them to get recovery finally or get help finally. There's this myth out there that it is um, hitting your rock bottom. Don't wait for a rock bottom. That is not a thing. Okay, there's only, when it comes to substance abuse, the only rock bottom is death, right? I said I'm not going to do the scare tactic today, but it's true. The only rock bottom is death. A lot of people out there have been hearing people who are in recovery talk about once you hit your rock bottom, you want to get the help, and that's just not true. You cannot wait to ask for help just because you're motivated. That moment that you have that, oh my gosh, I think I need help, that's when you've got to make the calls and you've got to just get on it, okay? Am I an addict? There's the addict who has no clue and is totally oblivious, right? That's the addict is, you can't even believe they're doing what they're doing. And, and it's interesting because a lot of times they'll go one way or the other. Sometimes they'll get the information and get it reflected back to them and they'll totally kind of want help and, and try to figure things out. Or sometimes they just skip to um, number four and they don't care. They just say, eh, I don't care, whatever. The addict, there's another addict who has periods of realization and then they keep going back to justification and denial. They bounce back and forth, back and forth. And those are, for me, the hardest kind of to work with because I never know what I'm gonna get in the door. Is this the one who's being honest today or is this the one totally stuck in lying to themselves? And then there's the addict who is not in denial and they totally want help and a lot of times they've gone through a lot to get there. And then, as I mentioned before, number four, the addict, who doesn't care. Eh, whatever. This is cool. This isn't, this isn't really going to kill me. Everybody's just making this a bigger deal than it is. And, and that person is sad to watch, and you, and you really hope that they don't have to experience too much to get to the place that they are no longer in denial. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm going to get here in the interest of time um, to recovery necessities, okay? If you're sitting here and you or somebody you know might be an addict, there are some necessities for recovery. That, and, and recovery is not sobriety. Stopping the behavior, stopping the drugs or alcohol, that is important. But even people who are in recovery might end up using, they call it a relapse, but that doesn't mean they're out of recovery because they're trying to grow. They are improving as a human being. Their mind is wanting to be better. But there's a few recovery necessities. The first is asking for help. That's another thing I've repeated over and over and over again today. Asking for help is so important. You will not be able to do it alone, I promise. Trying over and over again. People who truly go from being an addict who's in trouble to finding that happy place where they can have whatever their white picket fence life is, keep trying over and over again. They don't mess up and then go, oh, I knew I couldn't do it. I'm a total loser. I'll never be able to get help. They mess up and they go, yep, I know that's a part of the process. I'm gonna try again. And oh my gosh, I'm gonna try again. And I'm gonna try again and again and again. And then this is really important and um, you have to surround yourself with others who struggle. Not, I'm not saying the people who are in the middle of the addict struggle. The people who might understand. A community of people who are trying to get better. And sometimes that's really hard to find, especially at your age. But you've got to find people who struggle and also want help. And that gives you opportunities to help other people. Number five, helping others, is almost never talked about, and I don't know why. It is one of the most important pieces to recovery, to getting better, is your willingness and your ability to help others who struggle like you. There's something in that connection that gets made. When you finally reach out and help somebody, that like solidifies your recovery. It solidifies whatever's going on and changing in the brain so that you can find that happiness in your life. And then last, I don't have time to talk about the six pillars. I, I could literally go on for hours about the six pillars, but it's each point in your life. It's the pillars of your life, your spirituality, your mental health, your fitness and, and overall health. It is your hobbies. It's your education and um, or your career, if you're already career minded. Okay. But those important pillars of your life, 
must be in balance. Sometimes people go into recovery and they're just focused on just recovery, 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 recovery. And that's, that's, that's great for a little while, but to truly kind of graduate from being an addict who really struggles and is being affected still to somebody who can live a normal life is finding balance. Okay, finding a way to focus on everything, every part of their life. Okay. And so the last kind of message I want to give you guys is if you are sitting here right now saying, I kind of identify with some of this stuff, okay, tell somebody. Just tell somebody. Even if you think tomorrow you're not going to feel that way, like it's just right now that you feel that way, at least start the conversation. And remember this, I'm not trying to change anybody's mind today. I'm not trying to make you go out here and, and preach all about addiction, but I'm trying to plant little seeds so that someday, if you need it or when you need this information, you can recall it or at least recall some of it. And again, ask for help, okay? So I appreciate you guys listening and I'll be here for a little bit if anybody wants to come up and ask me any questions but have a great day. Okay.